Pace attention. quickening. People in the stands, here we go. Jason Bat waves the green flag. We are underway. Down into one they go, side by side. GW Egbert, Bryce Pritchett off of two down the back straight away. Look at the momentum off the top side, Brian Pritchett. Bryce Pritchett, excuse me, driving down into turn number three. Right around the top side of the racetrack. Brian, we're going to complete lap number one. Give it to Pritchett in the 21 machine. G-Dub. G-Dub. Down to the infield. Problems in the 70 machine. Zingenberger, Zingenberger off of two. He's the man on the move. Three wide off of two. Three wide at turn number two. That's excellent action right there. Zingenberger in the 66 machine, making it look easy in the Sniper Speed sponsored entry. Out of turn number four, we'll complete lap number two. It's still Pritchett out front. The driver out of Crandall, Texas, showed him the way right now. The 82 machine of Shelby Williams sitting in second spot. Shelby Williams dropping it into three. Looking to the inside of the 21. A Bryce Pitchett pushed it up a little bit. Coming off a of four. I tell you what, Brian, that was an excellent piece of driving right there by Williams. That could have got ugly in a hurry. The car got real snug right to the middle of the transition from three to four. Williams doing everything to hang on to that 82 machine and still problems for the 70 of GW Egbert. G-Dub with his hands full tonight. Speaking of hands full, Brian, we got three cars duking it as we come to cross flags in heat race number one. Down into one they go. Zingenbergen looking at the high side of Shelby Williams coming off a of two, getting a good strong run down the back straightaway. He's setting his sights on the 21 of Bryce Pritchett. To the outside of turn number three is Zingenbergen up top, top shelf through three and four, right alongside the wall, squeezes around the top side to take the lead. Give that one to Elijah Siebenbergen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ain't on your feet after that one, you're doing it wrong. That's right around the top side. Squeezing it through the wall in the 21 machine. Siebenbergen gonna lead lap number six. Brian, we're coming to two to go this time by. Down the front straightaway. 66Z, followed by the 21 of Bryce Pritchett. Here comes Shelby Williams down into one. Multiple groove racetrack. We're three wide once again in a turn oh. number two. I don't know how there wasn't contact right there, Brian. There ain't room for the Holy Spirit between those two cars. It's Williams on the top side. Pritchett through the middle. The white flag's out one more time around. Here comes Bright Mark Adams in that 82. Looking at the inside of the 21 of Bryce Pritchett. But out front, it's all Eliza Zeeman Bergen. And barring catastrophe, Brian, I'd say for the final time at a turn number four, yes, indeed, Mr. Elijah Ziebenbergen in the 66D going to take the win by a straightaway IMCA Stock Car Heat Race number two. Eight laps the distance, eight cars the field. Green flags out, Brian, we're underway. Dean Abbey pushing up. Nice clean into one. Clears to 03 at Justin Roberts. Three wide. AJ Dancer taking over the third spot. Here comes Clay, Caleb Crenshaw. Crenshaw top shelf through three and four. We're three wide once again out of turn number four. Your leader is Dean Abbey. Justin Roberts in second spot. Looks Mike. like the third position is still oh, not stacked up. Here's the 12 of Travis Graves battling AJ Dancer for that fourth and final transfer spot. Gonna complete lap number two. Still Teen Abbey out front. Justin Roberts, a little bit of oversteer off the exit of turn number four. Third spot belongs to Michael Childs in the 01 machine and AJ Dancer rounding out your top four. That track does look, look good out there. It needs to be worked in just a little bit more. The cars seem to be pushing a little bit. Eel handling. He looks like the Michael Childs 01 stock car in third spot. You can definitely see some of the snugness on the entry of the corners, Brian, as we watch a good battle for sixth on the racetrack with the Z-Man, Zach Spillman, underneath the 12 of Travis Graves. They're side by side at a turn number two. But like I said, you can see some of the cars snug on the entry, yep. and especially the 03 of Roberts, kind of loose on the exit. Caleb Crenshaw on that sixth seat takes over the fourth spot from the 52 of AJ Dancer. He's set in sail, trying to get up to the... The battle side by side, Justin Roberts, and that battle in that 01 of Michael Childs. 
That's for second spot on the racetrack, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like it's going to be Roberts hanging on to the position, but you're right, Brian. All the way from turn two until about the exit of turn four, those guys were door to door. Down the back stretch, look like we're going to set it up that way again. Out of turn number two, it's nose to tail this time. Child's going to look to the inside, maybe. And Roberts blocking a little bit, slides up the racetrack, leaves the door wide open off the exit. Child's not going to be able to do it. Flagman giving him two laps to go. Dean Abbey in a different zip code. He's a full straightaway ahead of the second place of 03 of Justin Roberts. White flag going to be out this time by for Dean Abbey. Definitely laid the keys on the front desk and has checked out on the rest of this field. Second spot, Justin Roberts just now crossing the start finish line. Whew. I tell you, them sniper speed chassis, they are fast. We talked about it. Making it two for two. Looks like that's exactly what Abby's going to do. He'll take the win in heat race number two. This time out of turn number four with Granzer and York on the front row. The green flag waves, and we're underway. William Gould looking to the inside of Granger. Going down into, I'm sorry, not Granger, Jody York. Woo, off of two. He takes over the second spot. Look at Kirk Martin. Brian already duking it out for that fourth spot. He'll take it over down the back stretch. The fourth spot was Ranger Ship in the 57R. Martin making his way through the field. One lap down, one spot picked up. Let's off see. Four. Look at Weston oh. Abbey. Abbey picks up three spots right there through he turn number four. Here. Said, hey, thank you. Good battle, William Gould. He's looking to the inside. We got Going into three. We got two pairs of two shaping up here, Brian. As Abby goes to the bottom out of turn three, or out of turn number four, excuse me, takes over that fourth spot from Jody York to the double zero. Up front, though, it's Granzer with the lead, pulling away from William Gould, if I might add. Granger, Gould, Abby, York. But here comes Kurt Martin. He's looking to the inside. Going into three, coming off a of four, trying to take over that fourth and final transfer spot. Martin really trying to make this thing three for three. Got a hard row to hoe right now in the 69 machine, working on the double zero. And Jody York out of turn number two, side by side. Tony with a great shot on those guys right now. Martin really trying to make something work on the bottom of the 69 machine. He was out here last weekend to test and tune his car. I, I talked to Joe. I said, hey, is that a modified on, with a stock car body on it? I tell you, Kurt Martin, when he was hot lapping by himself, that car sounded real strong. <laughs> and the car really rolls the weight well through the corner as we go back up front. With Granzer still leading this thing. Nose to tell. First three, you can throw a blanket over him. Absolutely, man. Top three right there. Nose to tail down the back stretch in at turn number three. So Granzer with the top spot. Here comes Gould to the inside. Something I've noticed is working the tires as we come to two to go, especially in these big stock cars. You've really got to woe the car up. Definitely. Get it to roll over on the right side, and you lose a lot of speed through the transition, whereas on the top side, your entry may be a little bit slower, but, man, the speed you can carry coming off. Definitely. We got a, a we had a good battle for fourth. Jody York pushed up last lap, pushed up in turn three, allowed Kurt Martin to take over the fourth spot. White flag is out this time, Brian, and they were side by side of the stripe. Looks like Granzer are going to have it to himself. Gould did not get the run he wanted in turns one and two. He's trying it again. Three wide through three and four. Checkered flag is out. Who's it going to be? Give it to Granzer at the stripe. Going to be Gould in second. Weston Abbey going to bring it home in third. The inside row moves up. Off of four. Great flag. We're going racing. A little bit of contact there on the get-go, but it looks like we're going to keep the green as Bissonette leads the field into turn number one. James Thompson settling into that second spot. Looks like third right now is Leroy Barnard in the 26X machine. Then you got the 41 of Danny Merrill and the 33K of Shelby Baker. That's your top five. Here comes O'Brien on the inside, going to take away the fifth spot from Baker out of turn number four. Baker back to sixth. O'Brien now sets his sights on Danny Merrill. Trying to get up, crack that top four. We've got a good battle shaping up for the top spot. Brian down the back, shoot into three. Thompson on the inside, not going to be able to get it done. The Mod Texas driver trying to keep the 85 machine glued to the inside, but Bissonette going to carry the momentum around the top side, hang on to the lead. Nearly three wide at a turn number four was shaping up to be that way. Looks like uh, O'Brien thought a little bit better of it. Still up front, though, the best battle on the racetrack right now. 
Dennis Bissonette leading the field into turn number three. It's still Thompson on the bottom once again. Down low out of three and four, the 85 machine. Trying to find some dig there side by side at the stripe, Brian. Woo! Good battle for third. We got Leo Bernard, but right behind him is a 41 and the 14. I tell you, I, you know, you look out front, you see the top two kind of getting away from it, getting away from everyone else, but uh, there's a good battle for third. Absolutely. Good action all over the racetrack, but like you said, a big gap between them. We're going back into turn number three here coming out of turn number four. Looks like Bernard going to have that third spot. Danny Merrill as we cross halfway, four down, four to go. Danny Merrill still in fourth. Joe O'Brien trying <laughs> to crack that Tom four right now. He sits in fifth as we're back up front, side by side, out of four. Still, Dennis Bissonette by a bumper cover, man. It don't get no closer than <laughs> that. Right. Got an outlaw car. I'm not quite sure what Dennis. It is, an, it is an outlaw chassis on the inside. I don't know what Dennis's is yeah, uh, on sure the Tom side of the racetrack, but definitely an outlaw racing chassis in the 85 machine is flying. Joe O'Brien pulls it into the infield in turn number three. We got two, two to go up front. Exactly. Two laps to go. Still just about side by side off the exit. It looks like Thompson maybe bobbling a little bit on the exit of turn number two. Bissonette stretches it out to about a car, car length and a half. Into turn three. Going to be Bissonette for sure this time. Brian, the white flag comes out. One more lap around 281 Speedway. And down into one they go. Dennis Bissonette, he, he looks like he's got this one under control. The 85 is pressuring him, but he's an old vet. Thompson slung the car down into one. The car got tight, took a bad push. This is the one for all the marbles right here. Bissonette trying to get around the lap car of Parham. That makes it close, but no cigar for Thompson. It's Bissonette taking the top spot. Thompson in second. Let's wait on third oh, spot. Looks like it's going to be Leroy Bernard in the 26X yeah. machine. Yes, indeed. And that's going to give the fourth spot to Danny Merrill in the 41. So th Mr. Grind. Green flag out once again. Take two on heat race number two for the factory stocks. And Miller leads them down into turn number one. There's contact already. Look at Oates at the bottom of the racetrack out of turn two, Brian. Woo! Craig Oates, opportunistic guide going into three. Man, he, he went from third to first. Absolutely. First, third first to first. Turn. In a one set of corners, we can call him Mr. Opportunity as he takes the opportunity. No pun intended. John Miller, Grant Wallum, Terry Dumas, your top four. Then you got Ryan Powers, the 04 of Justin Boyd, and bringing up the tag in the fields, Colton Pritchett in that 12. I tell you what, one to keep your eye on right now, folks. I think it'll be the R12 of Flying Ryan Powers going to be trying to crack that top four. The car looks a little, little iffy on the exit of turn number four as he slings it back down into one. A good battle for the second spot between your front row that's Miller in the 112 machine the gray car entering turn number one turn number three and the blue 26 of Mr. Grant Wallum that's the battle for second spot out front the 91 of Craig Oates good lord he's going through one and two going down the back straightaway the rest of the field you know they're about a straightaway behind yeah. Oaks just on cruise control right now we got big contact out of turn two that time between Miller and Wallum again the battle for second spot looks like Miller going to get a cushion as Wallum way out of shape down the back stretch that time four down four to go still Craig Oates John Miller in that 112 and that's a Ryan Powers Powers Fabrication factory stock Sh leading the way got his team car the R12 of Flying Ryan Powers I saw I was tracking his social media. He was he was a little behind. <laughs> he loaded up. Uh, I think it was about 7.15. And they're coming from Kennedale. And I said, why is he always late? <laughs> hey, man, I was cutting it close. Came up here from Austin this afternoon. Uh, had enough time to go home and not stink, pet the dogs, and then walk out the yeah. door. As we come to two to go for your leader, Craig Oaks, putting a lap. On oh the boy. 12 machine it's, of Colton Pritchett. I'm telling you, it's looking like about a oh. full half of... Oh, John Miller. Miller around in turn number four. Looks like we're going to keep it clean and keep it green. That's going to give the second spot to the 26 of Grant Wallum as the white flag comes out for your leader, Craig Oaks. Wallum, now into that second spot. Here comes Dumas in the 55D to the bottom of turn number three. Ryan Powers in that R12. Thank you very much. I am... 
Uh, well, I was going to say I'm taking over, but, you know, he, he gets passed by Justin Boyd in that 04 as a white flag continues to wave. Checkered flag out now. Craig Oaks going to take the win in heat race number three for the factory stock division. Your third and final looks like second spot going to be Grant Wallen in the 26. Exactly third going to be the 55D. Terry Dumas. And Couple of 281 Speedway regulars. And then Ooh. the... 04, a Justin Boyd running yep. at the top four. Looks like out. This time out of turn four, ladies and gentlemen, heat race number three for the factory stocks. Justin Whitehead taking that early lead down into one. Ruben Bouchard hard on his tail. Now Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry about that, Brian no, Bouchard. Got a good run down in the turn one and two. Closing the gap down the back shoot into three. Whitehead with the lead. Going to complete lap number one this time. Ooh, oh, and Whitehead. White, side by side off of four. See, Ruben Bouchard, he has many laps on this track. Justin Whitehead, I don't believe he's ever been here. I give him a lap, and, and he'll figure it out. <laughs> Starting from scratch, it's always important to take the best notes, and when you don't have any, you just kind of go with what you can. And again, the car not wanting to cooperate through three and four, Brian. We got James Bailey in third. His car's pushing like a dump truck. Here comes Simsick. Oh, boy. Looked like Blackwood had a little bit of issue. Didn't see Simsick. Simsick taking over the fourth spot. And definitely some big contact there. That was a lick from the 88, Jay, there. Don't think it was on purpose, but definitely could have done some damage. Out front, Justin Whitehead, Ruben Bouchard in tow. Then you got the 96 of James Bailey and the 44. Well, slash 26 of Anthony Simpson. You know, we talk about those top two cars starting to separate themselves. They're straight away ahead of third spot right now. Third spot's James Bailey in the 96. And Whitehead, again, the car not wanting to cooperate through the middle of three and four as we come to halfway down. Four down, four to go. That car is going to be a handful all night. Justin going to go home and again, that time in turns one and two. Snug right through the middle. Whitehead with his hands full for sure. Going to be making some notes. You see him sling the car down into turn number three. Almost sprint car style <laughs> off the exit of turn four. Ruben Bouchard licking his lips, going down into one, thinking if I can only get a little closer. Absolutely, and, and those first couple of laps early on, Burchard had some good runs down into one, even into three. Whitehead having to adjust his driving style, and Burchard just trying to keep the pace and keep up with him as we come to two to go. Whitehead going down into one, coming off a of two, down the back straight. He's going to be catching the, the 88J of Jeff Blackwood, the 13 of Melissa Bailey, and the 11. He's a new one, Alan Burgess from Stephenville. This is interesting right here, Brian. We've got three lap cars. The white flag comes out. Brichard got to go now. If you're going to go, Ruben, now's the time. Whitehead dealing with lap traffic. Brichard getting around the first one. Half a lap to go into turn number three for the final time. Whitehead still caught up behind the 88 J of Blackwood. Coming to the checkered. I don't think it's going to be enough. No, Justin Whitehead going to take the win. Brian Burchard, though, a great run in great second run. spot. See that? That's really the great equalizer. One of the best classes, in my opinion. I absolutely love him. We're going green flag racing with heat race number one. And look off the outside, Brian. Brad Shirley. Wow. Taking the lead into turn number one. I was looking at that 10 car of Dustin Robinson. He was banging the cushion up top. I thought for sure he would jump the cushion and... Oh, look at that Underwood getting on the binders hard. John White. Some beating and banging going on in heat race number one, but look up front. It is Brad Shirley in the double zero. Hot on his heels. Dustin Robinson out of Post Texas driving the number 10 machine. JJ Jennings in that 26G. Right behind him is the 8J of John White. Robinson once again favoring that high sign through turns one and two. Brian, look at him going into three one more time. I get it. I bet he does it. Carrying the momentum around the high side, but look at Shirley. Slides up, shuts the door, hangs onto the lead out of turn number four. Will we see the first slide job city of the night? The 2018 season? Maybe. Robinson working hard to make something work on the outside of the racetrack. Watch Shirley once again. Probably going to slide up, shut the door. Sorry, I was reacting to the 26G of uh, J.J. Jennings. Had a half spin. And turns two, uh, three and four. 
gathering himself. Gets back on the track. He only oh. lost one spot, so no a, harm, no foul. A rare mistake out of the Corpus Christi driver, the 26G. I missed it, JJ. My bad, buddy. Got it pointed back in the right direction. Like you said, only losing one spot is still the same up front, though, as Robinson once again to the very tip top of the racetrack, right alongside the concrete out of turn number two. <laughs> going to lose a little bit of ground that time. Surely about two car lengths going into turn number three. There's or, definitely a slick spot going into three. You can see it. It's a nice little glaze glistening. Absolutely. The track, like we talked about in the hot laps, was nice and fluffy. That's gone on the bottom of turn three as we lose the 2X now, machine of Nathan one, Arm. Definitely. One, the top of one and two looking real good. It's still, as you say, fluffy. So there's tons of grip up of one and two, but when you get into three and four, that preferred line is, is very slick. So you'll see the 10 car, he, stra he, he wants to go just a groove up from that slick spot, and you see Brad Shirley in that double zero, Looking just, just getting his right rear on, into that. He's better on the slick. Check your flag. Where did this race go? Over in a heartbeat. These Southern wow. Sport Mods really flying around 281 Speedway. The win going to the double zero, the double zero excuse me, uh -huh. of Brad Shirley. Second spot was the 10 of Dustin Robinson. Third spot, the 8J of John White. And rounding out your top four, the 26G at a Corpus Christi, Texas of J.J. Jennings. Lights are out, ladies and gentlemen. Going to be coming to the green this time out of turn number four. There's the green flag. We're underway, Brian, with heat race number two. Rolling, rolling, rolling. 51, Thomas Walp out to your early lead. Here we go. Three wide off the four. Here comes Shane Pretty oh, trying to make it four wide. That ain't going to work, oh, Shane. No. But Shane from, from the back of the pack, Brian, up to fourth spot in half a lap. First lap going to be led by Thomas Walt. Second spot is Hayden Wade in the AW3. Then it's Wesley Warren and the 766 Here comes Shane Pretty off of Shane two. Pretty. Look at that. Good Lord. Picks up two spots out of turn number two. Splits <laughs> the difference. We're three wide again into turn number three. I'm telling you, these Southern Sport Mods, they put on a dang show. Two, three wide. Stair stepping through one and two. Big puff of smoke out of the 7MK of Kyle Wilkins. He's one of those just made a move. Split two cars out of turn number four. Wilkins now spraying for mosquitoes. It's a little early, Kyle, <laughs> but we certainly appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> All right, off of four, Wesley Warren. He's looking at the inside of the 8W. Oh, and Hayden Wade getting snug right to the middle. Here comes Warren on the inside in the 75 to take the third spot out of turn number two. Down in the three they go. You can throw a blanket over the third, fourth, and fifth spot. Absolutely, man. One and two trying to check out on the field, but three, four, and five, that's where it's at right now. And I tell you what, Wesley Warren and Hayden Wade, no stranger to being on the racetrack at the same time. Both those guys, regular competitors at Heart of Texas Speedway exactly. last year in the Hobby Stock Division. Both of them making the move up this year to the limited to the sport mods. Out front side 51W, Thomas Walt, second spot at 766 is Shane Pretty. Then he got about a half a straightaway back to Wesley Warren in that 75W, and right behind him is a 7MK of Kyle Wilkins. I tell you what, we're going to go back up front here out of turn number four, I think, Brian. Looking at the top car, it's Thomas Walp. That guy started up front, shot a deuce out the window on his way, and has just never looked back. The car nice and smooth out of turn number two. Locking up the left front wheel. It's not even on the ground entering turn number three. <laughs> Walp on a roll as the white flag comes out. And I tell you what, Shane Pretty started in last place, has worked his way up to second spot. Third spot, the 7MK of Kyle Wilkins. And rounding out your top four, it's the 75 of Mr. Wesley Warren. We're already coming out of turn number four for the final time. It's going to be the 51 of Mr. Thomas Walp with an impressive show in heat race number two. As we were watching guys up front, the 7MK took over the third spot from the 75W, pushing Wesley Warren back to the fourth spot. So once again, your winner, the 51W, Mr. Thomas Walp, and then it's the 766 of Shane Pretty in second spot. Man. <laughs> Whew, they're rolling through three, coming off the of four. On the gas, we're green flag racing. And again, it looks like Ritter. The 5JR going to lead the field down into turn number one. Here comes Gabe Tucker.
yeah, definitely a Northern Sport mod in the lead right now. You can see the rear end hiking up. Basically a Northern Sport as he gets blown, his door's blown <laughs> off yeah. around the outside. Gabe Tucker shows him what we do down here in Texas. Gabe takes the lead through yeah. turn number two, but you can definitely see, Brian, the rear end hiking up on that 5JR machine. There's always that battle. Southern Sport Mods faster than Northern Sport Mod. Northern Sport Mods faster than Southern. It, not yeah, tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> but then the Northern guys are going to be like, well, they got that tire. The tire means everything. <laughs> We are side by side in the turn number three. That's for third on the racetrack. Clink and Beard in the 66 machine, battling with Richard Walp right now in the 26. Right behind them, the 5'11 on a slate in Texas. It's Corey William. My ADD. I, every time Ray Duan he goes by that loud, loud car, I'm like, <laughs> man. My, Cross flags this time by, ladies and gentlemen. Four down, four more times around for Gabe Tucker. It's still Ritter in the second spot. Tony looking right now at fourth and fifth. That's what you're seeing at home, ladies and gentlemen. That is Corey Williams in the fifth spot trying to get around. Richard Walp in the 26th. Walp loses the handle on the machine, and Williams has to get on the binders. The first three, one, Gabe Tucker back all the way to third. They've, they've pretty much spread out. Best battle on the track is definitely what you're seeing in your view. The 5'11", of Corey Williams at 26, and Walp in the 64, a Devin Burgess. Two to go that time around, ladies and gentlemen. White flag going to be in the air. This time out of turn number four, Gabe Tucker, the 95T out of Carbon, Texas, going to have one more lap around 281 Speedway. Down into one, he goes. Gabe Tucker in that 95T, making it look easy through one and two, down the back straightaway. Into turn number three for the final time. Tucker, a little bit of dab, a break, kicks the rear end out. The checkered flag waves was the leader. Now the winner, Gabe Tucker, the 95T. Looks like Ritter going to come across the line at second. The 5JR, quick Nick Clickenbeard going to come across the line in third. We're doing it. Doing it in 2018. Doing it and doing it well. 92, pacing the field. Off of four, green flag waving. And look at the jump off the outside for Justin Neighbors. A 28J machine out of Kemp, Texas. Rockets into turn number one. Your pole setter, Larry Yaley, really snug on the entry. Going to lose about five spots. Go from first to sixth in a one set of corners. Neighbors, your leader right now in the 28J machine. Tyler Bragg sitting in second spot. Ronnie Bell, your point champion here at 281 Speedway, having some trouble sliding almost all the way to the back. Looks like he missed the setup a little bit. And your pole setter, Larry Yaley, back to the back of the pack. The battle right now, though, Brian, the one for second spot is 24T of Tyler Bragg out front. The, sec the third spot, excuse me, belongs to the 11R of Trevor Rainey. Rainey started in the sixth position and has made his way up to third. A good drive for that young man. Next group back, we're looking at the screen right now. If you're, whoa, a little bit of contact there. Here it comes. The 5R machine of Ryan Doyen to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get around Ronnie Bell. Down into turn number one, Doyen oh. real sideways, going to lose it in turn number one. It's We're going to stay clean and stay green, though, Brian. We good to go. No harm, no foul. Flagman says four down, four to go. It's been all Justin Neighbors, started outside pole. Then he got the 24... 24T at Tyler Bragg, that right behind him is 11R at Trevor Rainey. And in fourth spot right now, it's the 411. 411 machine of Junior Watts. Out of Juan, Oklahoma. And right behind him, your 2017 track champion, Ronnie Bell 95 machine. Back up front, Justin Neighbors. Top side of three and four. Right alongside the wall on the exit. Going to be coming to put around, put a lap on your pole sitter. We got two to go at the flag stand. About a lap and a half for your leader, Justin Neighbors in the 28J. Second spot back. Looks like it's still Tyler Bragg in the 24T. Bragg now trying to put a lap on the 92 machine of Larry Yaley. Bragg to the bottom of turn number four. White flag out for your leader. That could have been disastrous. The, 90, the 92, the pole sitter, his car is pushing like a dump truck, and when it snaps around, it almost took out the 11R of Trevor Rainey. But coming off of four, 
to take the check and flag the 28J of Justin Neighbors. Second spot looks like it's going to be the 24T of Tyler Bragg. Third spot, I do believe, is the 11R of Trevor Rainey. That's a good run for Rainey. Brian started sixth on the racetrack, worked his way up to third, had a good battle going on with the yes, 24T sir. of Tyler Bragg the whole race. That right there is how it gets done. So that's Ranger Shipman in that 57. Green flag is out, ladies and gentlemen. We're underway with your street stock heat race. If you want to follow along with the lineups at home or even in the stands, you can do so. Go to MyRacePass.com, uh, create an account, or sign in as a guest. Look up 281 Speedway. You can find all the lineups, the results from the evening as we go through the night. Pretty cool little feature. It makes it a lot easier for us announcers up here in the booth for sure. Definitely. My Race Pass is a really good app for announcers. And, I mean, it also is a great app for you as a racer. You can promote yourself. and Absolutely. It makes it easy for perspective, uh, you know, would-be sponsors, would-be advertising uh, partners can, can track you and your, and your results. Yes, sir. And as we give a nice little plug to my race pass, there we got some hot, hot street stock action out there on the racetrack. Duke getting out for second spot. It's Ryan Hopkins to the inside. Made the transition really well from factory stock to street stock. A lot more power. Same kind of car, but a lot more power underneath the hood of the 468 machine. Working on second spot right now with Drew Garcia in the nine car. Wade White has uh, waved goodbye to everybody <laughs> behind him and he, is uh, checked out as we get two to go. He wasted little little time with with the off season and his winning ways translating to the 2018 season. It's it's like we hadn't even left. I mean, it, it, you got the brand new car out front checking out. Ryan Hopkins doing really well and Wade's car from last year that won the track championship. I just Picking up right where he left off exactly. last year, your, your street stock track champion here at 281 Speedway. Uh, looking to add a W into the column. Going to pick up a heat race for sure. Checker flag going to come out this time by Wade White. Going to pick up the win out of Waco, Texas. Midlothian, Texas driver Andrew Garcia comes across the line in second. His chest fro, as you will. Off of four. Green flag. Scott Newberry got an... Got some new blood in this class. Scott Newberry is a new, new driver. Rick's Man, looking like he's been doing it for a while out there, kidding. Brian. That is a clean-looking car. Two-tone paint job. Absolutely looking great at a turn number four. Going to lead lap number one is uh, Scott Newberry in the 11S. Oh, oh, problems for Green. And I think that was Newberry hard on the brakes. Marcel Green nearly getting to the back. Harold Clifton, that 47C, he took over the second spot. Right behind him is a 45 of Brian Benson. That is also a new driver this year. Yeah, you can see, you can see Newberry hard on the brakes coming into the corners. The, the interesting thing about these sport compacts, they're all front-wheel drive, so they plow through the corners <laughs> on the get-go. Oh, yeah. You really got to adjust your driving style. And you can see some of the guys that have been doing this, guys and gals have been racing these cars for a couple of years. They've really got the technique down. Yeah, I mean, you almost have to hit the e-brake <laughs> to get the – to get the tail end of the car to, to come around. You just about do, man. And it's it's almost easier, I think, for some of these these cars that have manual transmissions. You can be, you're out there shifting, uh -huh. you downshift, get the RPMs up coming in the corner. What little torque you've got, you've got <laughs> to take advantage of. And it comes pretty high in the power band. That's why you're going to hear a lot of, of downshifting in some of these cars throughout the night. Flagman giving them two laps to go. Got a great battle, Harold Clifton. He's doing everything he can to take over the top spot from that 11 car, a Scott Newberry. I tell you what, Newberry may be new to this man, but I think he's got a knack for it. Still leading the thing with one lap to go out of turn number four. If you pay attention at all from last season, that that pinky car, uh, that that's an old Clifton Wisnet car that uh, I guess was sold to Marshall Green and. That's what we like to see. When cars get sold, they get raced by new people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is the checker flag going to come out? It's going to go to Scott Newberry, second place. 
gonna be the 47 C of Harold Clifton. Oh, didn't see no. her. She, she pushed right up into me, and I, I dumped her. And as she's spinning, she was giving me the, the number one. <laughs> You're number one. Yeah. That's great. Green We're going flag. going green with eight race number two. <laughs> Down into one, the 11 H Howard Watson. Well, there's wait, there's I'm kind of confused. How many? That's a four. Is that Dakota D's? Yeah, Dakota D's out front. I'm sorry, the 14 kind of looks like an 11. It does. We should we should help Dakota with his four. Yeah, give him a <laughs> give him a can of spray paint. Yeah, and spray. It. I'll I'll sponsor you some spray paint, buddy. <laughs> we'll make that four a little bit bigger. Dakota D's your leader right now. Second spot looks like it's the 11 H of Howard Watson, side by side with Jack Lewis, Jack out Lewis of Temple, Texas, taking over the second spot. Here comes Clifton, wasn't it? And that 10, different look. Yeah, good looking machine there, the number 10 car. Absolutely. Is that a, is that a Cobalt? Chevy Cobalt it looks, there. It looks to be a Cobalt. Well, his nickname's Pinky, though. But That's it's a, a yellow car. So what do we call him? We should sponsor him some yellow, some pink, some pink exactly. paint. Yeah, that's confusing. I, it's confusing. I mean, this is the first night out, and he goes and throws us a curveball like this. Yeah, absolutely. Already coming to cross flags, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It is still Dakota D's out front. Jack Lewis in second spot. The 11H, your pole setter, Howard Watson in third. Fourth spot is uh, Clifton Wisnat in the 10W machine. And Pamela bringing up the rear. In the fifth spot in the 01 machine. Dakota Dees was your 2017 Rookie of the Year. He's, I mean. Like Taking I, him to school right exactly. now on the racetrack, man, as we come to two to go that time around. Some of these guys, you know, like the Wade Whites, you know, they, the offseason doesn't really phase them. They come out right out the box getting the Ws. So Dakota Dees coming off a of four, taking a white flag. One more lap to go. Looks like D's picking up right where he left off last year. Rookie of the year in this. That's awesome, man. Coming out, having some success. Looks like, barring catastrophe, I'm going to say going to pick up a heat race win here. One more set of corners. Into turn three in the 14 machine. Out of turn four for the final time, Brian. Yes, indeed. Going to take the win in heat race number two for the Sport Compacts. Six cars, ten laps, Brian. Heat race number one. Here we go. Off the four on the bars on the gas. Down into one they go. Hood looking to the high side. Down the back straightaway side by side into three. Side by side with Sean Ritter. Look at Ritter on the inside trying to take over the top spot. Ryan Slot hanging on to it at a turn number four. He'll lead lap number one. Down into one they go. Ryan Slot followed by the seven SR of Mr. Ritter, and then one B of Brandon Hood, and then G.W. Egbert. And again, side by side, oh, contact. The pass wasn't quite clear. Looks like slot with some problems. Possibly a left front flat on the 49 machine. Sean Ritter, Brandon Hood, G.W. Egbert, and Ryan Slaughter is your top four. Ritter out of Keystone, Iowa, trying to get those IMCA points, trying to get started early on the season. Woo! Reason they come down here, I tell you what, the points accrue nationally. The season in Iowa is about 10 minutes long because it gets cold there. <laughs> so they really try to get as many races in as possible. It's, it's, it's what, your top 50 or so of the year, I think it is? I think it's 55 races total. 55 but races? 30 of the ah, 55. Okay, okay. But yeah, so, like, like you're saying, you know, they, they only race really for about a week. <laughs> but, they, but they race like 10 times a night. It's really yeah, bizarre. It's, it's pretty insane, but those guys come down here. The season starts early. Those points going to count towards the end of the year. So if Sean gets a good run here tonight, and he's well on his way, leading this heat race by a straightaway and a half, it looks like, those points are going to go towards that total at the end of the season. And uh, Sean trying to keep it pretty. Five down, five to go. Mr. Ritter out front by a mile. But a great battle, as you can see. One being Brandon Hood, GW Egbert to his inside as they're making their way through three and four off of four side by side, still at the line. G Dub on the road from worst to first here in heat race number one. He's about halfway there, sitting in third spot right now, started in the sixth position. Laps are winding down, as like we said earlier, Mr. Ritter. Oh, Slot. far and away. Slot with some issues after that earlier contact. 
Driving over the nose with the 29 of Jamie Campbell. His, his car looked like it didn't rotate very well coming into three and it pushed all the way up. And by the time he got it, the, the, the back of the car unhooked, it almost would have been bad news for him and Jamie Campbell in that 129. Yeah, something out of whack on the front end, probably on the left side of that 49 machine. Slot had some contact earlier with Ritter, your leader, taking the white flag. Best battle on the racetrack right now, though, going into turn number three. Brandon Hood in second spot, GW Egbert trying to find his way around. McGregor and Salado, Texas, duking it out right now for second spot. Meanwhile, into turn number three, your leader, Already coming out of four, almost a half lap advantage. Ritter, Sean Ritter, gonna Ooh. take the win Ooh, in half e race number one. Half a track over. Now, mind you, Brandon Hood, he finished second in points here. Just whooping him. Brandon, absolutely capable. Those two guys right there, some of the best in the business. 37 machine, Josh McGay outside the front row. Who's not good in this race, man? <laughs> Green. Down into one they go. Green flags out, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Brian. We're back down into turn number one, and Hardy Henderson picking up right where he left off at the end of 2017. Going to lead the field into turn number three. They're side by side for second. It's Jeffrey Abbey on the bottom of the racetrack. Brian Henderson leads lap number one. Going down into one, we got Jeffrey Abbey in that shot car, formerly owned by his brothers, Dean. I'm telling you, he's just taking over that second spot from Josh McGay. McGay's been driving a modified for like a decade now. He's just making it look easy. <laughs> that shot car is hooked up. Larry Shaw builds a heck of a modified. That's from my neck of the woods. You're welcome, Texas. <laughs> and I tell you what, Abby closing the gap quickly, but we've got action slicing and dicing mid-pack, Brian. It's the 19M of Mike Moore picking up two spots in that set of corners. Here comes Abby, though, challenging for the top spot off the bottom of four. I tell you, that 19M looking real sweet. That's a factory 517 car. That wrap on that car is looking, woo-wee, looking nice. Henderson's. That third spot. That, man, it does look good. The 19 machine, that's Mike Moore, started fifth spot, picked up two so far, yep. making his way towards the front. Chad Melton taking over that fourth spot at 71. McGay back to fifth. Justin Ratcliffe. Rounding out the field. We're back up front. Henderson bobbles maybe a little bit into turn number three, but not enough for Abby to make the move. Henderson, still your top spot as we cross the halfway mark. Five down, five to go. Now, Hardy Henderson, he was running a crate last year. He's in his son Jake's car. That's a, that's a six-inch 355 out there. Just working it. I tell you what, it keeps running like this. It might be uh, Dad's car before too long. Here comes Abby on the bottom of turn number two. Henderson toting the left front all the way down the back of the straightaway. The car, the wheel stops moving before we get into turn number three. Henderson once again up the racetrack. Abby on the bottom. They're side by side out of four. Give that lap to Hardy Henderson, but I tell you what, Jeffrey Abby is hot on his tail as they go side by side down the back straightaway. Once again, Henderson with the left front in the air long enough for it to stop spinning. I think it might be the end of the run, though. No, still around the outside. It's Henderson at the line. I tell you what, the flag man, Mr. Jason Bat, nearly didn't get his flags out. He's watching the race, too. Got the best seat in the house for I sure. You, you get a bunch of racers that, that are not racing. They get to become a fan of this and forget what they're doing. Yeah, I forget what I'm, I should be talking. Jason forgets the flag. I don't know who to give that lap to, Brian. It was literally oh. side by side at the line. This is the best race I've seen I'll all year. Well, Get it all year. Oh, oh, ah. yeah. Looks like Abby looking like he's going to pinch it down. Go towards the top. Oh, the no, that's it. That's it. Get Abby it with Abby. the win. Heat race number three going 10 laps. Demon Wotek. Off the of four on the bars on the gas. Green flag. Looked like maybe Freddie got a little piece of the concrete coming out of turn number four, and he definitely got a little piece of John Gober there. Or should I say John Gober got a piece of Freddie Wotek coming into turn number one. Good Lord, that 57. Woo. And Deming going to lead lap number one. Look around the outside, Brian Shipman. Look, oh, we've got two together. It's John Gober. And Jason Hunter looks like they've got unhung, but Hunter going to bring it to a stop. Get up on the bars and take off, but he's going to wait. 
Right about the middle of turn number three. Looks like the green is out. John Gober going to take it to the high side of the racetrack. I think the 52 is done. I saw that thing spin on the start. Gober parks it in the infield. I do believe it is a flat left rear. Looks flat from here. Well, we're going to complete lap number two, Brian, and it looks like Deming still going to be out front in the 3C. Look at Shipman, though. I, I'm tapped. I have a sneaking suspicion that's Mark Shipman. You think so? I think so. Well, Mark got his hands full right now. If that's who that is in the 57 machine, he's definitely got an ill-handling race car. The car hopping into turn that number three. That definitely is Mark Shipman. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows Mark, Mark, Mark likes donuts. <laughs> They don't call him the Texas Tornado for nothing. Woo. Mark going to turn it into the infield, trying to get it back on the racetrack. Colin Deming with a with a snow plow through the middle of turns three and four. The car's stable enough, but it really does not want to rotate. You can see again, the car just, it's up on the bars, but it just doesn't want to turn. Look, coming into turn number three. Well, and you're going to make a liar out of me, Colin. Good job, man. We got a good zoomed-in picture of you, and you don't do what I've been saying you've been doing. Ain't that, ain't that the way it goes? Dimming once again. There it is. There it is. Snow plowing into turn number three. The car really not good. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. I really appreciate it, man. Shipment around again. We got some ill-handling cars. Some, as you say, snow plow. Some are just way too free. One of them out front right now, though. Looks like Snowplow might be the way to go. Fast Freddy <laughs> Wotek trying to do his best. Close that gap. Looks like he gets some ground, but look at the exit. I say the three C car dimming is really pushing it into turn number three as we come in here. The exit off of four, though, going to be just about textbook. And then gaps Wotek by two car lengths down the front stretch. So Fast Freddy Wotek, he won our, our first ever 1,000 to win modified race at the beginning of the season. So he's no he's no stranger to to winning them big dollars. Yeah, Freddy didn't come by that nickname on accident. He's called Fast Freddy for a reason and uh, trying to close the gap right now in second spot. Looks like that's about his best run so far as uh, Deming had a hard time at a turn four last lap. It's going to be white flag in the air this time, though, Brian. One more lap to go. Four-year leader, Colin Deming in the 3C machine. Look like the nerves, they're calmed down a little bit. They're not overdriving in the corners anymore. Car's settling, rotating real well, coming off of, off of two down the back straightaway. Wotek, I think he's settling in for second. Off of four, give that win to Colin Deming. Yeah, really just Wotek didn't have enough to come up and take the spot and just... Freddie been doing this for a long time. Six cars, the field, 10 laps the distance. The green flag is out. We're underway with our final heat race of the night. Three wide down the front stretch. Matt Gilliam on the outside at turn number one. Brian side by side with William Gould. Oh, Gilliam off the pace at a turn number two. You need to be careful. I've seen, I've seen plenty of the modifieds flying off the top of yeah, there, turn two. There's, there's not a lot going on back there. Definitely. As Problems for Gilliam, man. I don't know what it was. The car looked like it was set. It was up on the bars, and all of a sudden, it's just nope. Somehow, That's it scary. happens. It's race car <laughs> thing, man. I, you know, check it twice. Double check it every time. We're going back. Green flag, Brian. Last wow. heat race of the night. Chris Bragg wasting a little time going to the front. Here comes Chase Allen pushed up a little bit. Was hard on the binders. I was going to say, I thought Allen had a good run underneath William Gould. Got on the brake so hard, the car bounced through turns one and two. Gould makes the move off the bottom of the racetrack. He'll lead lap number one. Here comes Chase Allen in that 130. Car rotating real well off a of two down the back straightaway. He'll take over the second spot from Chris Bragg in that 24B. Textbook move on the bottom of turn number three. Slides up to take the line away. Here comes the 24B of Chris Bragg, though. Tried the crossover maneuver. Not going to make it happen. I'm afraid to say that uh, William Gould has laid the keys on the front desk and checked out on heat race number four, Brian. It looks like he's going to be checking out, but you got three real hungry drivers right behind him going through four down the back, down the front straightaway, looking to take, take over the top spot from William Gould. 
Still cooled out front about a straightaway advantage over Chase Allen. Allen trying everything he can to close the gap and, get, and take the lead away. Once again, I do believe it's top three going into the redraw tonight from the IMCA Modified Heat Races. Yes, sir. So Chase Allen got a redraw spot for sure. Going to be starting in the top half of this feature tonight. Still trying to close the gap. Calera, Oklahoma driver William Gould out front right now. A former national champion for the IMCA Modifieds. One of the best in the business, especially in the southwest region, central Central Southwest. I don't really know what you call Oklahoma. It's Oklahoma. <laughs> it's Oklahoma. And anybody that can win a track championship at KSP when you're battling B mains and things like that. Absolutely, I mean, you, man. When he won the national championship, you almost have to bank on winning the KSP track championship in order to get them bonus points. Right. To compete with the guys up north. Right. It's it's crazy the kind of competition that those guys up north give the guys down south it's it's definitely an interesting dynamic because like we talked about earlier the season up north is so short they race four or five nights a week in some areas yep. down here you're lucky to put together a friday and a saturday and the miles that you've got to put on your hauler on your equipment yes. just to get to the track are insane insane I'm 135 miles from here, and I probably have one of the shorter drives of the night. Yeah, I mean the guys up 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 north, eight. Hey, you know, you could you could throw a blanket. I like to use that term, but you could throw a blanket and, and cover four or five tracks. I mean, there's so many tracks up there. But the problem with all of that is they don't really get the car count. You know, it's kind of give and take. You know, down here we have to travel, but we get pretty good car count. Well, up north they can win three or four track champions and only get like ten bonus points. Going to be coming out of turn number four for the final time. Checkered flag going to go to the Calera, Oklahoma driver. William Gould going to take the win. Chase Allen in second. Your third and final redraw spot going to go to Chris Bragg. Watching from Sioux Falls, uh, Sioux Rapids, Iowa. Thanks for tuning in, Drew. Green flag is out. Be made number one. Underway here at 281 Speedway. J.J. Jennings jumping out to the early lead. Leads the field through turns one and two. Second spot looks like it's Williams in the 511 machine being challenged right now by the 481 of Sander out of Cisco. Sander with a real ill handling race car out of turn number four. Going to settle into that fourth position. Looks like third. Going to go to Devin Burgess in the 64. Remember the top five transfer right now. Your fifth and final transfer spot. Ray Doyle in the nine machine. Good battle going on for second spot right now. Williams in the 511 machine. Coming under fire from Devin Burgess in the 64. Side by side at the line. That time your leader is still the 26G of J.J. Jennings. Almost a straightaway ahead down the back chute into turn number three. It's Jennings over Williams and Burgess in the 64. Rounds out your top three. Those two side by side for second spot. Williams with the spot right now. Preferring the high side of the racetrack here at 281. And now Burgess to the bottom out of turn number two. Side by side. Burgess makes the move down the back stretch into three. Burgess up to second spot. Williams back to third. Williams now trying the bottom side of that turn number four. He'll retake the runner up position out of four. Williams to the second spot. Burgess back to third. It's still Sander in the 481 machine with the best seat in the house right now. Watching this unfold as now. The 64 of Burgess on the bottom side of turn number three. Burgess. Maybe by a bumper that time at the line. Not sure from this angle, but it looked like it may have been. Devin Burgess at the stripe. That's where it counts. Burgess now with another good run off the bottom of turn number two. Williams up top coming into three. Not where he wants to be. Burgess on the bottom gets the 64 to rotate. Not going to be enough. Williams still with the second spot. Halfway there, folks. Six down, six to go. Your leader. Far and away, a straightaway advantage for J.J. Jennings. Still the top spot. A lot of camera love right now for this second spot battle. That's where the action is. Williams once again. Oh, Burgess snug through the middle that time. Williams going to take the second spot. Burgess back to third. Now has to play def defense from the 481 of Tony Sander. Ray Doyen now getting into the mix as well. The fifth and final transfer spot. That's two, three, four, and five on the racetrack right now. Pretty much throw a blanket over these guys. Here comes Doyen to the bottom to take over the fourth spot. He'll do it out of four. 
Sander battling back of the line. Not sure who it's going to go to that time. Sander around the top side smacks the wall coming out of turn number two. Grabbing some concrete on the way out the door. Jennings still a straightaway advantage over Williams in the second spot. Burgess is third. These are your top five transfers. Once again, all five of these guys going to go on to the main event. Doy in the fifth and final transfer spot. Two to go from Jason Bat. Nearly three wide that time off the exit of turn number four. Burgess to the top shelf. Here comes Doyen on the bottom. Maybe a little bit of contact there with Sander and Doyen. White flag in the air for J.J. Jennings. He's crossing the start finish line now. Their second spot, Corey Williams, back up top to Jennings, has pretty much been by himself in his own time zone through the B main here. Looking good through three and four for the final time. The race on Texas decal on the hood. Corpus Christi zone. J.J. Jennings going to take the win in the 26G. Always good to see the younger guys out here. Hayden, a young kid still in high school, I do believe. So good to see him rising up through the ranks. Brian, as we go green. Run. Ooh, hard contact down the back stretch, Brian. We had Gerald Henderson getting oh. together with J.R. Watts. Talon Minton kind of skating through that one, coming out unscathed. Good, good fortune shines upon the two car. Ronnie that was, Bell, that was crazy, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't see it. I was, I was, I was blinded. I guess I should have used the uh, the heads up. Here we got the nice race on Texas monitor here, so I'm watching live what Tony is broadcasting to y'all. And I probably would have seen the contact with Gerald Anderson. Fetter's definitely got a good eye behind the camera over there on the perch. He's Always good to work with Tony everywhere I go, man. He's got like a sixth sense to know <laughs> right before something exciting was about to happen. He's right there videoing it. So, But out front, Ronnie Bell in that 95, one half of Team Bump and Grind. That would be Bump. He's out front. Full straightaway lead over Wesley Warren in that 75W. He got the 8W. That's Hayden Wade yeah. sitting in uh, third spot right now. Nearly three wide with Wesley Warren, Hayden Wade, and uh, Talon Minton there on the bottom of the racetrack in the two car. Talon, a brand new race car this year. Coming out in the number two. Looking good so far. Side by side with Wade. Down the back stretch into three. You can see a little bit of a hole starting to pop up. Coming in a just above the black groove there in turn number three. We'll see how that goes on throughout the night. Looks like we're going to lose the 92 of Larry Yaley. Tough break for Larry out of uh, Midwest City, Oklahoma. Got a good battle. You got Hayden Wade and Gerald Henderson battling side by side. Side by side for fourth. Down the front straightaway, still side by side. Talon Minton. Slide job, slide job on the 75 W and Wesley Warren. But out front, it's been all Ronnie Bell in that 95. Ronnie Bell almost a little over a straightaway ahead actually right now, Brian. You got Talon Mitten sitting in second spot, has worked his way up from a fifth starting spot. So really had to fight and scratch and claw his way through the field. Gotten around uh, Gerald Henderson, who's now looking underneath Wesley Warren on a turn number four. I tell you what, Wesley really has impressed me here this evening. Skipped, skipped stock car altogether. Went straight from a hobby stock right on into a to a Southern Sport Mod here. Kind of a big transition. A lot of things different about these race cars. Wesley has really made it work pretty easily as uh, Gerald Henderson gets around for the third spot on the racetrack. I was going to say, I forgot to rub my logo before pre-race, but it's right there in front of the seven, the 719 Motorsports. Appreciate Wesley Warren putting my logo on the side of his car. It's a good luck charm. As he's doing really well right outside the box. Right starting out the box, not right outside the box. Starting to shape up Ugh. to be a real good battle here. That is for the fourth spot on the racetrack as the white flag comes out. One more lap for Hayden Wade. And Wesley Warren. Ronnie Bell still your leader. 
Talon Minton in second spot. Gerald Henderson is third. Hayden Wade, oh, excuse me, Wesley Warren is now fourth. And J.R. Watts and Hayden Wade, oh, that's boy. the fifth and final <laughs> transfer spot, Brian. Business, as they say, is picking up. Absolutely. Right. Second flag out this yep. time around. There's Ronnie Warren taking the win. Second spot going to be Talon Minton. Third spot going to be Gerald Henderson. Fourth spot going to be Hayden four. Wade and Wesley Warren. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute. One, two, three. Four, five. Yeah. So Waden was, or Waden. Waden. Hayden <laughs> Wade was fourth and Ronnie, or blah, 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 blah. Wesley Warren. There we go. Wesley Warren taking that fifth spot. So that's your top five. Into three off of four. Green flag. And Abby off the top side gets the heads up. He'll lead the field down into turn number one. Hole shot's the word I was looking for. Been using that one all my life. You'd think I'd get it right off the get-go. Abby already gapping the field by about three car lengths as we come into turn number three. Brian, it looks like William Gould in third. Weston Abby, or excuse me, Gould in second. Weston Abby in third. We're nearly three wide out of four. Kurt Martin and Childs battling for fourth. Got a little pinball action. Got the Z machine, the 66 Z. He's settling into six. He's not going to stay there for long. Using that high groove. Looking at the high side. Trying to take over the fifth spot. Oh, there's a shot in the shorts from Zevenbergen. Getting in the back of Childs Bergen way up top. Hangs Bob it out to dry. It. Loses a couple of spots on the top shelf. But I tell you what, Brian, that was a heck of a save right there. That he was. had a head of steam barreling off in the turn number one. Hangs on to the 66Z machine. It's still Dean Abbey. Three laps complete out front. Good battle on the bottom of the racetrack for fourth spot right now. Looks like the 01 of Childs getting around Kirk Martin coming into turn number three. Martin in one of those sniper speed chassis sitting in the fifth spot right now, right behind Childs. And right behind Kirk Martin is 03 of Justin Roberts, and right behind him is a 6C of Caleb Crenshaw. Nose to tail, single file, one through five. Great action out on the track. Good battle right now between the 03 machine of Justin Roberts and the 6C of Caleb Crenshaw. Those two coming in at turn number two. Here comes the 66Z of Elijah Zevenbergen. That's five, six, and seven on the racetrack, I do believe. Actually, six, seven, and eight on the racetrack. Down the front stretch into turn number one. That's one of the best groups of cars on the track right now. Another good group a little further back, just now coming into turn number one. Looking pretty good right now. We've got, oh, oh we've contact. got two cars together. We got the Brothers Abbey, one, two. Big Brother Dean leading Little Brother Weston. As they get on the back straightaway, here soon they're going to be catching the tail end of the the, the field with Joe O'Brien. Lap traffic will definitely be playing a part in the A feature tonight. Three wide at a turn number four. That's where the action's out on the racetrack right now. Brian, it's Caleb Crenshaw, Elijah Zevenbergen, and Jer Justin Roberts. Side by side off a of two, Crenshaw Zevenbergen. Your leader has caught lap traffic, ladies and gentlemen. Dean Abbey has caught the tail of the field. Zevenbergen and Crenshaw, still one of the hottest battles on the racetrack, but your leader coming into turn number three right now. Dean Abbey getting into lap traffic. Already gotten around Joe O'Brien, putting a lap on Zach Spillman right now at the flags. Oh! oh! Abbey into the rear of the six of the, and oh, Dean Abbey no. looks like the radiator's gone. Oh, man. Everybody checked up on the front straightaway. Dean had nowhere to go. It looks like the, the, the fan just took out the radiator. Yeah, we've lost the radiator on the leader's car. That's going to give the lead. That is going to give the lead to Weston Abbey. Now at the tail end of the field. 112 of Weston Abbey out front right now. William Gould in second spot. Here comes Childs on the inside. Michael Childs to the inside for second. Don't look now, but the 66Z is a coming. Choo choo! It's a heck of a slide job out of turn number four. Michael Childs taking over the runner up spot. You're right, though, Brown. We got another one, the Z man. Zach Spillman around the bottom of turn number two. Gonna back it into the infield. A good job by the young man to keep it out of the racing line. 
Trouble off of four. We got the one. Or I'm sorry, the 57R of Ranger Shipman got crossed up in front of the field. Weston Abbey, still your leader in the 112 machine. Second spot is still Michael Childs in the 1C. Third spot is the 6C of William Gould. Fourth spot now belongs to Caleb Crenshaw. Got a good battle between Sniper Speed Chassis teammates. Kurt Martin and Elijah Zingenbergen. I believe that's for fifth spot on the racetrack. As you can see, the leaders, all kinds of in-lap traffic right now. Weston Abbey is still your leader. He's coming out of turn number four. Right there underneath the flag stand now. Weston Abbey putting another lap in the books. We've got a yellow on the racetrack. Caution for Bissonette. Ladies and gentlemen, I that's normally don't like to say this, but I'm glad that happened because now I can catch my breath. Hey. We get Weston Abbey out front. William Gould, Michael Childs right there behind him. 13 down, 7 to go. Green flags back out, Brian. We're back underway. Big lead for Weston Abbey going down into one. William Gould. Oh, Childs bumping the cushion. He said, eh, eh, it was a little cushion. Looks like the 21 Ch machine. Look at Kurt Martin going three wide for fourth. Crenshaw Adams, Kirk Martin, and Charles Cosper always fighting for that fourth spot. Charles Cosper started deep in the field tonight. Brian has made his way up to about, I believe, seventh spot on the racetrack. Good run for the breeze. We got a caution on the racetrack. Joe O'Brien. Yes. At least that's how I like you it. You definitely got to tighten your car up. Absolutely. If it's as free as some of these cars were in the heat race, it is not going to work out for you very well. We're fixing to go back. Green flag racing, 14 down, 6 to go. Weston Abbey, the Comanche kid, leads us to the green. As they roar down the front straightaway, into one, off of two, side by side, Childs and Gould. Childs and Gould been going at it door to door all night long. They've all been chasing an Abbey. Oh, so well. oh no, and Adams is around. Crenshaw was hard on the binders. Just made contact with him. Abby Childs Gould. Top three. Green flag. Green flag's back out. Weston Abbey back on the loud pedal. Oh, wow. And Childs right across the oh nose boy. of William Gould. Gould gets into Martin. Wow, they scattering like cockroaches we got Kurt Martin and William Gould getting together we're gonna leave it green Martin or excuse me Martin gonna pull it off the racetrack Gould gonna get down in the infield it's still Weston Abbey out front Michael Childs in second spot third spot look at I that the V18 of Kenny Merritt him and Cosper battling for third Two to go right now, ladies and gentlemen. Two to go this time by Weston Abbey. Michael Childs out front. Charles Cosper in third spot. Charles Cosper sitting in third right now. Caleb Crenshaw fourth spot. Oh, here we go. White flag in the air, ladies and gentlemen. One more lap to go for Weston Abbey. Michael Childs in second spot. Here comes three, four, and five. It's Cosper, Crenshaw, Adams. Three, four, and five right now. Down the back chute for the final time. Into turn number three. Out of turn four. He'll take the checkered flag. It's going to be the Comanche kid, Weston Abbey. Second spot going to go to Michael Childs. Third spot will be the 33C of Charles Cosper. Off of four. Got the 12 jumping the start a little bit. Green flag is out, ladies and gentlemen. Ruben. Got Craig Oates in that 91. He is, he's a man on a mission. Trying to find his way towards the front of the pack. He and Justin Whitehead, nose to tail, down the front chute, into turn number one. Oak slings the 91 machine into the first turn. B 
beating and banging, bumping and grinding. I don't see nothing wrong with that, though, Brian. This is factory wrong. stock racing, man. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump of grind. I'm glad you played along. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's where the Nick game came from. It's exactly, <laughs> it's exactly right, man. Craig Oaks, after starting the 91 machine in the 16th position, Brian, he's in fourth spot. I, I tell you, I mean, it's... <laughs> that, Justin Whitehead, after starting in the 17th position, Brian, he's in sixth spot right now. Those two guys are two of the best in factory stock racing as Whitehead takes the fifth spot away from Perum. You would, you would think the that they have nitrous or something in their cars, because I tell you, there is so much drive in them to in them uh, them cars. I just Those I'm, East Texas, Louisiana guys know how to get it done, man. That's where this rule set started. Gene Boyder actually at, at uh Arquitec Speedway, Vivian, Louisiana, came up with this rules package. I don't know, six years ago, if Zach Clark was here, man, he could let me know. I think it was about six, five, six years ago, and it's just exploded. They're everywhere. Over in that part of the country, they'll run B-Mains as Craig Oaks takes the lead at turn number four. Wow. Here comes Justin Whitehead up to third. We've got two cars around in turn number four. Looks, Looks like Danny Merrill in the yep, 41. Danny Merrill in the 112 and the 112 of John Miller, yep. A bunch of good cars still in this race. Green flags coming out this time around, ladies and gentlemen. We're back underway. And Broussard going to lead him into turn number one. We've got a big pile up on the front stretch. Going to lead him to the green flag. Dennis Bissonette, Craig Oaks get together. It's beating and banging, but we're going to stay clean and stay green. Ruben Broussard going to lead him into turn number one. Craig Oaks on the outside of Bissonette. Looks like Oaks going to settle into second. Bissonette third. Whitehead up to fourth. Here comes Oaks on the bottom of turn number three. Underneath Ruben Broussard for the lead. Craig Oaks takes the top spot out of four. Craig Oaks going to lead the field into turn number one. Ruben Broussard in second spot. Then it's Bissonette. Whitehead, your top four. Fifth spot right now belongs to the 04 of Justin Boyd out of Cisco, Texas. Whitehead. Looking to the bottom of the racetrack out of turn number four. Takes over the third spot. Maybe. Yeah, he'll snag third from Bissonette. Justin Whitehead on the podium at the moment. Underneath Ruben Broussard. I tell you what, Craig Oaks laid the keys on the front desk and Good has Lord, checked yeah, he, out on the field. Ruben Broussard. Right now, trying to hang on to that number two spot. Here comes Whitehead on the bottom out of turn number four, Brian. Boy, down the front straightaway. Here comes Justin Whitehead down into one. Getting the car to roll over on the right rear. Coming off a of two, getting a head of steam down the back straightaway. Here's where it's going to get fun. Craig Oaks out front. I do believe we're almost halfway through this deal. Justin Whitehead, I think, has 11 laps left to close a straightaway advantage. This is where it's going to be fun. Two like the, of the best in factory stock racing. Sorry about that, brother. Oh, two of the best fine. in factory stock racing. Of running one and two right now here at 281 Speedway for the big chill throwdown. You got the double. You got the zero. The rear brakes are locked up. Rotors are glowing red. Definitely on that left rear, the zero car. I think that's Parham. Yeah, Shad Parham in the zero car. Probably going to have a fire on his hands here in a minute. That rotor is a red hot. Red. Red hot. Fifty-five machine. Fifty-five D of uh, Terry Terry Dumas, Dumas making his way off the racetrack. Your leader still the ninety-one of Craig Oaks getting around the eleven machine. Put him a lap down. Here comes Justin Whitehead now. Has closed the gap a little bit. I don't know if it's going to be too little, too late. Oaks would still about a straightaway over Whitehead. And then it's, I tell you, Ruben Richard, <laughs> Justin Boyd, and Dennis Bissonette. That's the best race, honestly, on the track. And that's for third. Two to go right now that time by the flag stand. Brian, I'd say barring catastrophe, this one's going to belong to the 91 of Craig Oaks. But you're right, best battle on the track. 
is Ruben Broussard right now in third spot. Fourth spot belongs to the 04 of Justin Boyd. Fifth spot, Stephenville starter himself, Mr. Dennis Bissonette. White flag's in the air. Let's watch who it's going to be. Ruben Broussard leading that pack through turn number four right now. One more lap. Into three, one final time. The 91 of Craig Oates off of four, taking a checkered flag. Craig Oates going to pick up the win, ladies and gentlemen. Second spot, still a straightaway behind. Justin Whitehead, I tell you what, that doesn't happen often. Who's it going to be for third? Looks like it's going to be Ruben Broussard, Justin Boyd, Dennis Bissonette going to round out the top five. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there, that's your factory stock feature. Woo. Kyle Wilkins going to lead him to it with Brad Shirley on the outside. Green flag is out. We are underway. 20 laps the distance in your IMCA Southern Sport Mod. Kyle Man event. Wilkins car pushing. Brad Shirley taking over the top spot. We got trouble, J.J. Jennings, Corey Williams, and Ray Duan. Good Lord. Tack another hour onto that Corpus time, and, and that's about how far J.J. made it up here. Tough oh. to see him out. We're back underway. No laps complete, complete restart. And oh, Wilkins good over Lord. the nose of the double zero machine. Off of four. Green flag. Oh, Justin Neighbors, something happened to him. Neighbors slow on the outside, the 28J machine right up against the wall. See if Justin's gonna limp it around, maybe take it off the racetrack. We're gonna get a lap in. 766 of Shane Pretty, your leader. Second spot right now belongs to the 11R of Trevor Rainey. Got a great battle between John John White, Tyler Bragg, and Gabe Tucker for third. Yeah, Gabe Tucker sneaking up into the mix there from Carbon, Texas. Like you said, John White, Gabe Tucker. Don't and look Tyler now, but Bragg. here comes Ronnie Bell. Ronnie Bell joining the party. He loves the party. Absolutely, Ronnie Bell, your, your 2017 uh, Sportmon champion here at the racetrack, so knows this place just as well as anybody else out there right now. I believe he had three or four wins last year, if I remember right. Memory's a little faint. Still Shane Pretty out front. About three car lengths over your second spot. That's Trevor Rainey in the 11R machine. Third spot is still John White. Then it's Gabe Tucker. Now look at this, Ronnie Bell doing battle with Bragg. In the 24T there, Brian going into turn number one. I tell you, the best best battle on the track is definitely what Tony is looking at. Tyler Bragg, Ronnie Bell, Gabe Tucker, and John White. Just, I'm telling you, that's a great battle. Four cars duking it out for three, four, five, and six on the racetrack right now. That's the best action we've got. Bringing it to you live at raceontexas.com. Bragg down to the bottom of the track in turn number three. Tucker, top shelf, Brian, coming out of four. Well, it looked like Tyler Bragg in that 24T got a little squirrely coming off the four. He gave that position up to Gabe Tucker. Lost ground, but here comes Ronnie Bell looking to his rear bumper. In the turn three, Tucker now underneath John White. This 95T real snug. You saw that plow there on the bottom of the racetrack, Brian. Has to tuck right back up and hang on to that fourth spot. Gabe Tucker hard on the binders at 95, going into one. The interesting thing about this, if you're Tucker or if you're White, you want to be offensive and gain some ground, take some positions. One little bobble, though, you're going to lose it. Ronnie Bell's right there. Once again, 2017 track champion. He knows this place really well. He, he knows really what he's going to do. Gabe Tucker, one of the best in a sport mod in the area. Working right now on John White, but if he messes up, Ronnie Bell's going to be right there as Tucker goes to the bottom once again out of four. Yeah, run. And, and in his own right, John White, he's a very good sport mod racer out of 85 Speedway in his Texas. He knows how to get around the track. Gabe Tucker has a couple wins last year. Ronnie Bell, of course, multiple wins. So uh, that group of cars right there, very Tucker. talented. Tucker making the move, taking over the third spot. John White now doing that thing, trying to play offense and defense. It's a two-front war going on right now for White. It's a tough spot to be in, John White, getting it from the front and the back. 
It's like playing Risk. Yeah, exactly. You're you're on Australia, <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting attacked from both sides. Kyle Wilkins looking looking to be a, the next victim of Shane Pretty as he makes his way around the back of the field, lapping Tony Sanders in that 481. Shane Pretty caught up the tail end of the field, putting a lap on the 481 of Sanders right now as it looks like someone leaving the racetrack. I do believe that's the two that's yeah. of Talon Minton. Talon. That's and not looking good for the 281. No, I-37. <laughs> Still pretty cycling through the field. Coming up now on the 5JR. 5JR of Jamie Ritter. I think we're both fans right now. We're not really calling the action because there's so much going on. It's kind of hard to, I mean, you want to look at all the track and it's just easier to just not say anything and just watch, but you know. Hard to pick a spot. There's action all over the place right now. Your leader still dealing with lap traffic right now. The 11R of Trevor Rainey sitting in second spot right now, getting around Jamie Ritter. Yeah, it looks like the the top of three has got a nice little speed bump, if you will. A little rumble strip going into three up at the top. We'll, we'll watch right here as Gabe Tucker and Trevor, Trevor Rainey battling out for second spot right where Rainey is right, right now. There. There's a little bit of a tan spot right above that black line. That's a pretty good sized hole that started to pit out a little bit. Not really a big deal at the moment, but it could could upset one of the race cars if you hit it just wrong. Yep. There's another yeah, hole there's down a... there in the middle of turns one and two. That's a good battle on the racetrack right now. That's for second spot. Right Tucker. there. They just drove by it. Gabe Tucker Doc has to go underneath that rough spot, try to slide up the racetrack Inside, and get a good outside. move on it. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to crossover move, goes to the bottom of turns one and two. Here's Side another. Job. Speaking of crossover, <laughs> there's a good one right there. We've got two to go, Brian, for the leader. Shane Pretty out front, about to take the white flag right here. Looks like the lap cars cleared their cleared themselves out. Pretty got a half a half a straight away. Over Gabe Tucker. Gabe Tucker finally cleared Trevor Rainey. I tell you what, I think there were if there were five more laps in this race, it'd be Gabe Tucker's to lose. Winner gonna be Shane Pretty. Second spot gonna be Tucker. Then it's Trevor Rainey in third. Fourth spot is gonna be the 95 of Ronnie Bell. Ryan Ellis. Going to lead him to the green, and it looks like Ryan Hopkins going to go around him on the outside. There goes Drew Garcia, Wade White as well. So uh, Ryan Ellis, first to worst in a set of corners. Looks like that. Ryan Hopkins in the 468 going to be your leader on lap number one. Brian looks like Wade White going to be in second spot. Yeah. Then it's going to be Drew Garcia and Ryan Ellis. Yeah, Wade White's chasing his old car. <laughs> pretty bad when the old car's leading the new one, right? Well, I mean, there's he, he he put Ryan Hopkins in his old car, you know. It's we'll, we'll see how this is, how this goes. Ryan Hopkins is good on the slick. Wade Wade White's, you know, better better in the, on a heavy track. So we'll see. We'll see how this one ends. This will be a good 15 lap feature. Side by side. Wade White going to make the move. The 68 machine going to be out front. Ryan Hopkins in the 468. Yes. Which I think is a combination of Ryan's number. Yep. And then Wade's number. Yep. yep. There you go. That's how that happens. That's called reading between the lines, Brian. <laughs> reading between the lines. Man, that car is fast. Yeah, Wade's new car, the, six, the actual 68 machine, definitely Definitely going to be one to watch here in 2018 in the Street Stock Division. I think Street Stock's coming back to Heart of Texas Speedway as well this year. Yeah, there was. I, a, I believe that's how things are going. Yeah, there was a rules meeting earlier this year, or, or actually late last year, uh, talking about bringing bringing back the Street Stocks. 
And, uh, you know, they can run pretty much 281 Speedway's rules. Uh, they added in some other things that they agreed upon. But basically, it's the same rule package at Heart of Texas is the same as it is here. So if you wanted to run Fridays in Waco... How far co- is that from here? From here to there is about eh, about two hours. Okay, yeah. okay. But still, two some hours of those or guys less. that maybe live in between have somewhere to run on yeah. a Friday, come out here, run on a Saturday. Right, yeah. Wade, Wade White and Ryan Hopkins and uh, Ryan Ellis is from the clean area. So I'm not quite sure where Drew Garcia is from. Uh, but, uh, used to live in Waxahachie. I think now resides Mid-Lothian. in Midlothian. Okay, now. that's even closer. Them guys are real close, so it'll benefit them. I'm sure we'll see these all four of these gentlemen uh, out Absolutely. at Heart of Texas Speedway on Friday nights. And you can you can back to back that Friday Saturday deal. That's always good for you. Definitely, it's always good for you. So the 10 car out there on the track right now, Ryan Ellis actually in fourth spot, about to go a lap down from your leader. Wade White closing in in the turn number three. I uh, I affectionately nicknamed Wade White Rocket Man <laughs> because I, I firmly believe he needs to register both of his cars with NASA. Well, They're I re- that fast. I remember, remember one of the first seasons I was down here, Wade had, this is back when hot street stock rules were pretty wild, like no fenders, <laughs> like the, the pretty, modifi- much, pretty much whatever you wanted. Right. Um, Wade had, it looked like. The modified street stock. It did. Stock. It looked yeah. like a modified, had a big old spoiler hanging off the back of it, and he and Benji Kirkpatrick were like the guys yes. to go after in, in the uh, – in the street stock class. They, uh, it was pretty insane. You know, Tommy Kirkpatrick, uh, Benji's brother, is another guy that was, they ruled. Uh, let's see, Eddie Thompson, I believe, is another guy. Outlaw street stock guy, 181. Uh, i trying to think of who else. But, yeah, Heart of Two Texas. Two to go. Yeah, Heart of Texas had a really good street stock class there for a few years. Glad to see it coming back. We've got two to go, about a lap and a quarter for Wade White. He'll be getting the white flag this time around. Making it look easy. One more lap to go. Yeah, pretty much cruise control for Wade right now, man. The new the new car, good job, brother. Looking good, running good. Going to pick up the dub here at 281 tonight, night number one of the Big Chill Throwdown. Wade White starting off 2018 in the black. Got a W in With the column w. already. <laughs> and you got the 0-2 of Julia Childs. And sixth row outside is a four of Bill Hall. Green flag. Oh, trouble already. I'm be taking out half the field, y'all. Dakota Dees brought his car to the infield. Pam Wisnett. Yeah. Harold Clifton. Marcel Green. Marcel Green out front with a bonsai move out of turn number four, man. That was a power move. Sitting in second spot right now is the 47C of Harold Clifton from right here in Stephenville, Texas. Clifton Wisnat sitting in third right now. Your pole center, Pamela Wisnat, in fourth. And uh, dragging the bumper cover. <laughs> the 45. Rounding out is uh, Brian Benson. It's waving at us. Hello. Looks like the 0-2 of Julia Childs taking her car to the pit area. So it's Mar- Marcel Green, Harold Clifton, and Pinky. Pinky in a bright yellow banana boat. <laughs> it's Clifton Wisnet. Clif- 
Clifton Wisnat trying to get underneath the 47C there of uh, Harold Clifton. That was a pretty good move there. Didn't quite work out. Clifton hangs on to the second spot. We almost saw our first uh, slide job in the Sport Compact. That Looks like Wisnat with some issues. Maybe a He rolled it right front. front. Yep. He went in there. So as, as everything is sorting itself out, Marcel Green in that double zero, a.k.a. Pinky's old car, he's out front. And then the 47C, a Harold Clifton. And Benson in the 45. Then you got the 11 Scott Newberry and Pam Wisnett. Marcel Green, Harold Clifton, Brian Benson, Scott Newberry. Pam Wisnett getting some getting some camera time. Marcel Green taking her down into one. Rocking and a rolling too, man. Right. Marcel got that thing on a rail tonight. It's a, it's allowing I'm watching the broadcast and it's allowing me to see the hands inside the uh, the <laughs> The driver compartment, that's how you, it looks like a handful. He's, he's got five to go. Sawing on the wheel down <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the third one and two. <laughs> woo -woo. Man. I mean, it's a front wheel drive car. <laughs> Locking her up. You're fighting it pretty much the whole way around, man. Marcel makes this look a lot easier than it probably is. Coming up on some more lap traffic, it's the 97. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, man, that was close. That was close. Marcel almost went hero to zero. Got real close to your pole setter, Pamela Wisnett there. Got around her. Now setting his sights on Jack Lewis in the 97. Going to put Jack a lap down on a turn four. Marcel looks Green like, pretty much untouchable right now, man. It looks like the uh, the battle is between the 47C and the 45 for second. Clifton Wisnett and Brian Benson. Benson been dragging that bumper cover since the get-go. It hadn't <laughs> fallen off yet. Yeah. After uh, contact with the 45 and the 14, ripped his bumper cover off. We got two laps to go. Well, Honda sure does know how to make a rivet for a bumper cover, man. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. <sighs> Looks like an old prelude, the 45 there. Good batch of cars. White flag out for your leader, Marcel Green, in the double zero machine. I'm just, know, I'm I, real impressed with that bumper cover, man. That, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Be on there 15 laps and... It's literally like on by one rivet, I think, and it hasn't gone yet. <laughs> Checkered flag going to be in the air this time around, ladies and gentlemen. Marcel Green going to take the win. Second spot looks like it's going to be the 47C of Harold Clifton. Have going to have a hard, a hard road to hoe. He's got some fast cars in front of him. You got man. Anytime you see a name Egbert on a lineup anywhere in the state of Texas, I don't care what class it is. G Dub's one of those guys. It's like I want to drive a late model. I think I'll drive a late model. I want and then he goes out and wins a championship. A, absolutely, wins a championship <laughs> first year in a late model, and he's like, "Yeah, green flag." Green flags out, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to lead the field down in the turn number one. It's William Gould out front, nearly three wide. Brian on a turn two. Oh boy! Right behind him, he got Chris Bragg, G W Egbert, and don't look now. Here comes Chase Allen. Making it three wide, going through three, coming off a of four. Oh, there's some contact. Oh, the 19M, Mike Moore. He's he's taking an aggressive line. Right in. Wow, front. how did nobody? 
right in Whoa. front of God and everybody. That's uh, definitely one way to make things interesting, Mike. Uh, a pass in the grass doesn't normally happen in one and two. No. And it's usually nope. in three and four on the last lap. Looks like problems for the 37. <laughs> Jeffrey Abbey well off the pace up top side of the racetrack, trying to keep it out of the oh. way and limp it around the racetrack. The Contact. 37 off the pace. Jeffrey Abbey going to bring it to a stop in turn number two. Here at Stephenville, Texas at 281 Speedway. It's going to be a good race, I tell you. Absolutely. Two laps in the books. we got 18 to go. Anything can happen. William Gould going to lead him to the green on a turn number four. And problems again for Mike Moore in the 19M. Oh, trouble. Oh, oh, trouble. Oh, backing him up like dominoes. Like Brian said, William Gould can stomp on the loud pedal anytime he wants to. Looks like right in the middle of three and four, we're back underway. Green is out. Here comes Chase Allen. Pitching it down into one, coming off a of two. Stair-stepping. Gould, Allen, Bragg. Three wide at a turn, two. Brian looks like Chase Allen going to, oh, no, not, a, that's too much. Wow, good save. I thought it was going in the wall. I really thought it was going in the wall. Chase Allen with a bonsai move out of turn two, going to take over the lead down the back stretch. Bragg in second spot. Then it's Gould in third. Fourth spot. Looks like the 7SR. That's at Iowa. Iowa, gentlemen. Yeah, that's Sean Ritter. Ritter started in 12th position. That Team Harris car is flying. Looks like G-Dub, G-W Egbert rounding out the top five. Hardy Henderson, year 2017, 281 modified champion in seventh right now. Then it's Brandon Hood in eighth. Henderson and Hood, a good battle coming into turn number three. Brandon Hood looks to the bottom, but Hardy Henderson slams the door. Yeah, you got Brandon Hood, Hardy Henderson, Jason Hunter, and Ratty, Justin Ratcliffe. No look now, Chad Melton trying to join the party. Yeah, Rat, that's 10th and 11th on the racetrack, folks. There's action all over the place. Justin Ratcliffe and Chad Melton side by side going into turn number three. That's 10th and 11th spot on the racetrack. Look at Mark Shipman. He's wanting to join the party as well. The Texas Tornado. He'll be the first one to admit that he hates a dry slick track. Mark <laughs> Shipman wants to be on the loud pedal. He doesn't want to feel like he has to, you know, pedal the car like there's an right. egg underneath the, the gas pedal. He I'll wants to what. mash. Chase Allen making it look easy out there right now. The line that he's running through three and four, man, I swear when he threw it off in there that first time on lap two to take over the lead, I thought it was going to eat the wall. We got trouble. Top of turn one and two, the 24. Lights are out. Chase Allen, floor is yours. Green flag. Allen pitching it off one and two. Crossover move by William Gould in that 60 car. Yeah, that's shaping up to be a heck of a battle right there for second spot. Brian Gould goes down to the bottom in three and four, getting underneath Bragg. Still going to be Bragg in second spot. Chase Allen is your leader. Looks like the uh, looks like the preferred line is going to be down on the bottom. Looks like where that's where everyone's going. It's where a lot of the guys are going, but if you look at your leader, man, he's running right around the wall in turns three and four, going to the bottom in one and two. The watch on the other end of the racetrack slides all the way to the concrete on the exit of turn two. Chase Allen got this place pegged tonight, man. He's in another, he's in another zip code. Oh, oh trouble. Shipment around. Everybody's gonna keep it rolling. Mark got to get it back out on the racing circuit. We're all pointing the right direction. That was a good save right there. <laughs> Mark Shipman trying to take out our track photographer. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good save in turn four as well by the 7SR. That is Sean Ritter out of Keystone, Iowa. Nearly losing the handle on the 7 machine. Got it saved, though. That was a good, good move. 
Hardy Henderson, G Dub Egbert. They got a good battle going for sixth. Yeah, G Dub starting to slip back a little bit. Looks like Hardy's car coming around to the racetrack. The laps are ticking away. But Hardy's car, the 163, normally driven by Jake. Hardy coming into his own. Remember, folks, 2017 points champion here at 281 Speedway driving to 163 tonight. Chase Allen still out front. Second spot, William Gould. Then it's uh, Sean Ritter in the 7SR. Excuse me, the second spot belongs to Bragg in the 24B, not William Gould. Now it's going to be Ritter. Ritter makes the move in turn number three. Runner-up spot for Sean Ritter out of four. Long haul from Keystone, Iowa. Puts it in the runner-up position. $1,000 on the line. Looking like it's going to be Chase Allen right now. Well out in front. Dropping on back in the pack a little bit. We're going to look at a good battle between Justin Radcliffe and G.W. Egbert out of turn number four. That is for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the racetrack. Josh McGay getting in there. Chad Melton getting in there as well. Down the back chute into three. Gives seventh to Radcliffe. Eight to G.W. Egbert. Ninth is going to be McGay. And then tenth is Chad Melton. like the top five or nose to tail. They're, they're sprung out, uh, st strung out, I'm sorry. Strung out a little bit, but uh, for the most part, we got two laps to go. Still chased Allen about a straightaway advantage. Brian over the rest of the field. Allen rolling into turn number three, hard on the brakes. The car rotates nicely. White flag in the air. One more lap for Chase Allen. Allen out front, Ritter in second, a good run. Sean Ritter started 12th on this race, has worked his way through the field, made it up to second spot, but out of turn four, the checkered flag gonna wave for Chase Allen in the 130. 7SR, Sean Ritter will be second, third. Gonna Chris be Bragg. Or B and Chris Bragg, yeah, fourth spot, gonna be William Gould, rounding out the top five, gonna be the 1B of Mr. Brandon Hood. Brandon.